simple. Just follow the directions. You know, you've made a very wise purchase there, Mr. Tong. No home should be without one of these friendly little helpers. Well, cheerio. Thank you. Bye. Peter, have you seen my... What in blazes is that? Fabulous new invention. Automatic record cleaner. Automatic record... <laughs> oh, no. The prize pigeon has been clipped again. I not pigeon and I not clip. Costs only $14.50. No home should be without this friendly little helper. It's a helper, all right. Helping some salesman build a house in Palm Springs. <laughs> I'll get it. Might be some crockery salesman trying to unload the Hollywood bowls. Hello. Uh, hello? Does Edgar Bergen live here? Edgar Bergen? Oh, now, this is 1163. He lives at 1136, right down the block. Oh, they must have given me the wrong address. Sorry to have disturbed you. Well, any time. What were we talking about? Oh, uh, Peter, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, I will not have you spending my money on these ridiculous gadgets. But they're worth every penny, save wearing ten rickets. That's them all without removing from the rack. i show you. All right, show you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Gray. I turned on wrong switch. In reverse, it become fuzz blower for phonograph needle. Fuzz blower for the phonograph needle. Pardon me, I'm looking for Edgar Bergen. Isn't everybody? <laughs> well, isn't this 1163? Yes, that's right, but he lives at 1136. Oh, well, sorry, then I must have the wrong address. Mm, I'm beginning to think that I have the wrong address. <laughs> well, I'm awfully sorry. Goodbye. Bye. I wonder what's going on over at the Bergens. You know, I haven't been over there in ages. I think I'll drop by and pay a little neighborly visit. <laughs> Mr. Gregg, really wonderful machine. Can I just... No arguments, no discussions. You're going to give that back, and that is final. Okay, I'll try one record. <laughs> I better go reread directions. <laughs> Do you think he'd be... All right, girls, let's take the sketch from the top now. Fine, Edgar. I'm ready. Francis. Be there in a minute. Now, when the camera picks us up, <coughs> it'll find Francis, Charlie, and I sitting at a ringside table in a Paris cafe. We'll use this for now. Well, oh, la, la. Just be quiet, Charlie. <laughs> we'll get a load of those manzellies. <laughs> Charlie, will you please keep your mouth shut while I'm talking? I don't see why I should. You don't keep your shut when I'm talking. <laughs> Francis. I'm coming. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, girls. Bringing your wife to Paris? You flip, boy. <laughs> Where were you, dear? Well, someone had to do the breakfast dishes. Come, come now. How can you putter around in there with 20 million television fans waiting for our show? Oh, you dreamer, you. <laughs> I wouldn't be puttering around if you hadn't fired Greta. If we don't get a new housekeeper pretty soon, I'll have to phone my part in from the kitchen. Now, now, no family squabbles. This is supposed to be gay three. That's right. Hello, Hello Francis. Francis. Come in. Thank you. Hello, Edgar. Hello. Well, it's nice seeing you again. Seems like a year. Yes, that's right. I thought I'd drop over for a little neighborly chat. You know, it's a darn shame. We live so close together and we never see each other. Francis and I were just saying the same thing. Oh, really? What a remarkable coincidence. Well, how have you both been? Fine. Just fine. Alice and Judy, they're fine too. 
Alice and Judy. <laughs> oh, Alice and Judy. <laughs> oh, come on in. You might as well say hello. Well, I hate to intrude. Oh, you're not intruding. This is Judy Sinclair and Alice Winslow. And this is Bentley Gregg, well-known attorney and a good neighbor. Well, hi. Hello again. I'm sorry we had to disturb you. Oh, feel free to get lost on my doorstep any time. <laughs> uh, Frances, I get a feeling that I'm interrupting something here. Well, we were rehearsing for our TV special. Oh, well, don't mind me. Go right ahead. I'd love to watch. Sure you would. You always were a fan of mine, weren't you? Oh, yes, indeed, Edgar. Ever since Charlie was a twig. Watch the cracks, you ambulance chaser. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bentley, this sketch that we're doing here, it takes place in the French dive, you see, and we're all sitting around. Uh, excuse me. I told the office not to call me in Paris. <laughs> Hello? Your dog's going to shh, 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 Okay? Okay. <laughs> yes, we're still looking for a housekeeper. There's my husband, myself, our daughter, and the baby. Hello? Hello? Well, another housekeeper bit the dust. <laughs> oh, don't mention dust. I still haven't gotten around to it. What happened to your maid? Ask my husband. She quit. You mean after you said pack up your things and get out? <laughs> well, I just couldn't take it. You wouldn't believe it, Bentley. That woman watched television 24 hours a day. But Greta still got her work done. Oh, I could take the roller derby, but those horror pictures. Every time I went into the kitchen, Bella Lugosi was staring at me. <laughs> I'd rather have Bella Lugosi in the kitchen than me. I don't know how you expect me to rehearse and prepare lunch at the same time. Well, now, wait a minute. There's no problem. Why don't I have Peter come over and give you a hand? Oh, that's sweet of you, Bentley, but I wouldn't think of it. Well, I would. I've had it with those cold cuts. <laughs> you sure it won't be imposing? Why, no, not at all, Francis. As a matter of fact, I think I'll stay and have lunch with you. <laughs> you dog, you. <laughs> Oh, goodness, it's almost 2 o'clock. We're due at the studio. Yes, we are. I'm awfully sorry. Well, I'll drive you. Would you, Bentley? Sure. Oh, you're an angel. How can we thank you? Well, you know how it is with us angels. Fly now, pay later. <laughs> oh, Peter, you might as well stay around for the rest of the day and help out Mrs. Bergen, huh? I'll be glad to. Excuse me. Feels good. Come on in, handsome, and close the door. We can develop pictures. <laughs> Watch out for Effie. She's got a Sunday school face, but Saturday night ideas. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Mr. Bergen. I owe a gentleman. Well, in that case, forget it. <laughs> Excuse me. Good afternoon, sir. I represent... Why, Mr. Tom. What are you doing here? I'm helping out the Edgar Bergens. What is it, Peter? The man selling terrific new invention. Automatic record cleaner. Yeah, we'll buy it. A really big helping house. Save wear and tear records. Buy it, buy it. It's getting the places that... <laughs> Did you say buy it? <laughs> well, of course. Uh, how much is it? $14.50. Well, it's a deal. <laughs> There's 15. All right, sir, and there's your change. Thank you very much, Mr. Bergen. And thank you, Mr. Tong, for the business. Keep circulating. <laughs> Cheerio. Mr. Bergen, you sure be wonderful boss to work for. Well, Peter, you've got a standing invitation. You can work for me any time. Thank you, Mr. Bergen. Well, don't you stand there, plug me in. I want to start working. <laughs> Peter, what are you doing? Obvious what I'm doing. I clean in records same primitive way as ancient Greeks, by hand. Peter, the ancient Greeks didn't have phonograph records. Don't blame them. Who want to sit around all day wiping? <laughs> Hi, darling. Hi, Uncle Bentley. Peter, what is all this? I clean in records same primitive way as ancient Greeks. Look, Demosthenes, <laughs> what I said yesterday still goes. No automatic cleaner. 
But Mr. Bergen... I he... don't care about Mr. Bergen. You're tensing up. You're darn right I'm tensing up. Look, now take all these records and put them back. Come on, Peter, I'll help you. No. Big principal involved. Mr. Gray, act like I'm not know what I'm buying. Oh, really? Well, allow me to refresh your memory on a few of your little gems. Let's see, there was the handy-dandy doorknob polisher, the nifty-thrifty rock wool blower, Mother Brown's baffle banister buffer. You blind to scientific achievement. More people like you, Eli Whitney never come out with cotton gin. That's the only thing you haven't bought lately is a cotton gin. Please, now, you're getting carried away. Too bad you're not like Mr. Bergen. He get automatic record cleaner, no question. He say, buy it. I told you, I don't care what Mr. Bergen does. Around this house, we'll do as I say. What am I? Not entitled to opinions? This not the only job around, you know. Oh, are we threatening to quit again, are we? Not threatening this time. I mean it. Come on, now, both of you. No, he be stubborn, I be stubborn. I quit. I leaving. Huh? Here we go with that empty suitcase routine again. Would it have been so terrible if you let him keep the gadget? It only cost fourteen fifty. Uh, darling, fourteen fifty here, fourteen fifty there. He's got some idea that I'm the the handy dandy money machine. <laughs> oh, this has got to stop. He's right about one thing. This is a matter of principle. Hmm, here he comes, fastest suitcase in the West. <laughs> I hate to do this, but I'm leaving. Goodbye, Miss Kelly. Goodbye, Mr. Gray. Goodbye, Peter. Um, would you like me to help you with your bag? <laughs> They're not empty this time. Will you refrain and desist? In other words, lay off the cravat. All right. <laughs> Francis. Be there in a minute. Now stop it, Will. Sorry, but I've got dishes in the sink and a baby to bathe. What are we rehearsing, a soap opera? Will Francis find happiness in the kitchen? <laughs> if you hadn't been so unreasonable with Greta, we'd still have the best housekeeper in town. Oh, forget about Greta. Now, why can't we find somebody like Peter Tong? Mm, that lobster Cantonese of his makes me forget that I'm a Swede. Mm, you dream it. <laughs> Bentley would never have let a prize like him get away. Oh, it never stop. Peter. Good afternoon, Mrs. Bergen. Good Hello, afternoon. Peter. Mr. Bergen, if offer job still open, I available. But what, what about your job with Mr. Gregg? I quit. Man can stand just so much. Peter. Now, now, Francis, this is a free country. Now, if Peter wants to change jobs, that's his privilege. <laughs> well, come on in. You're hired. Let me help you with your bags. Huh? No, thanks. I manage. Edgar, you just can't do this. Peter's been with the Greggs for years. Uh, yes, I know. <laughs> well, I'm going to call Bentley. <laughs> Crestville 54699. Uncle Bentley, I'm going after uh, Don't move. I guarantee that he's standing out there waiting for us to crack. <laughs> Not as if this was the first time, you know. He's got quite a history of this. Hello. Oh, hi, Francis. What? He's what? what? Huh. That's the way he wants it. No, no, no. He's all yours. Bye. What is it? Peter's got a job with the Bergens. Well, what Mr. Craig say? He didn't object at all. He said you're all ours. He not even put up fight? <laughs> Come on, Peter. Let me show you to your room. Do you think you can make lobster Cantonese again tonight? Huh? <laughs> Anyone the agency sent over? Darling, now you should have seen what they sent over. A maid with a Pekingese and two parrots and a, and a butler who looked like he belonged on the Late Late Show. It hasn't this gone far enough? I miss Peter. Well, darling, now so do I. But he did take that job over at the Bergens. Now, you don't expect me to go chasing after him, do you? Hello. I'm here, 
about the housekeeping job. The agency sent me over. You did? Well, good. Uh, where was your last job? Oh, I worked three years for the Edgar Bergens. <laughs> you mean you're Greta? Yeah, that's right. That's my name. Wow, well, Greta, you're hired. Come on in. Uh, let me help you with that. Oh, no, never mind about this, thanks. But here you can help me with this. <laughs> now, Judy, this is for you crossover. All righty. Uh, oh, lady! Yes, young man? Oh, you, you dropped your, uh, oh, you dropped your, uh, oh, yeah, you sure dropped it, lady. <laughs> Mortimer, don't you know a handkerchief when you see one? How can you be so stupid? Well, I take shots, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. Oh, Mortimer. No, I know. <laughs> Peter. Uh, yes, Mr. Bergen. What in the world is that? Oh, ingenious new household appliance. Handy dandy doorknob polisher. Well, that's better than the milking machine. Yeah. <laughs> well, would you wait till later with that? The script needs more polishing than the doorknobs. Sure, Mr. Bergen. I just want to keep house clean. Seems like he's trying to make a good impression. Yes. I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> oh, Edgar, guess who I just met on the corner? Greta. Greta? What's she doing around here? She's gone to work for Bentley Gregg. Gosh, oh, him walks. <laughs> Greta? Greta? Yes, Mr. Gregg? I want you to know that I've invited a young lady over for dinner tomorrow night. Did you see that? Greta, must you do that? Oh, Peter, did it again! Greta, Miss Sinclair will be here at 7.30 tomorrow night. I'd like to have dinner served at 8 o'clock out on the patio. Okay, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Don't worry, Mr. Gregg. I'll fix up a fine... <gasps> Look out! He's behind you! Look around! Look around! <laughs> All right, let's try the routine. Da dum da dum 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 bum. Very good, Edgar. Just call me Twinkle Toes. <laughs> I'm glad you still have Charlie and Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you seen that one yet? That's Mother Brown's Buffo Bannister Buffer. going on out there? Oh, trying our fabulous new invention, electric lobster cracking machine. <laughs> Excuse, please. Got to iron out a few bugs. <laughs> lobster cracking machine. Now I've heard everything. Does that mean we're having lobster Cantonese again tonight? But I thought you loved Peter's Chinese cooking. Well, you know, I always thought it was a gag, but I actually find myself getting hungry again in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Go home? No. Good. Hi, Miss Kelly. How are you getting along? Everything okay? Gee, Peter, it just doesn't seem the same around here without you. Hello, Greta. Hello, Peter. How you like new job? Very nice. How do you like your new job? Very nice. Uh, tell me, Peter, how is baby Chris and little Miss Candy? Oh, I miss the little darling so. No, just how you feel. I miss my family too. Even stubborn uncle. Yeah. Uh, Miss Kelly, I've been meaning to ask you, do you know where the knife sharpener is? I can't find it. It's in bottom cabinet. Come, i show you. Good. Oh, hi, Mrs. Bergen. Come on in. Thank you. I came over to have a chat with Greta. How's she doing? All right, I guess, but 
I sort of get the feeling that she'd like to have her old job back. It's funny, I have the same feeling about Peter. How'd we get in this mess? I don't know. But I think I know how we can get out of it. Shall we ladies have a man-to-man -man talk? By all means. <laughs> No. They're playing our song again. Sounds like Peter's lobster cracking machine. It sure does. You know, I'm beginning to think I'd be better off with Bella Lugosi. <laughs> Peter! Yes, Mr. Bergen? Peter, didn't I make it clear that Mr. Bergen's had enough lobster for a while? But he said, okay for me to buy a cracking machine. I just want to give him his money's worth. <laughs> Your lobster Cantonese is delicious, but after all, three nights in a row. Oh, it's finally coming out. You not like the way I run house. Now, now, Peter. You impossible to please. No wonder fine housekeeper like Greta not able to stand it here. I quit. <laughs> What I say? What I say? <laughs> Judy, to a perfect evening. Cheers. And to a perfect combination, too. Sparkling champagne and your even more sparkling beauty. Oh, thank you, Bentley. <laughs> You're doing a bit of sparkling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Greta, would you mind turning that thing off, please? But, Mr. Gray! I told you, no television during working hours. This is a special occasion. It's a TV premiere of the new 1948 movie. Look at it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you'll have to turn that off. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gregg, no wonder a nice man like Peter wouldn't want to work here anymore. You're mean to your help. I quit. Well, I didn't mean for you to quit. Never mind, you can't talk me out of it. I'll call you and let you know where you can send my check. Goodbye. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? <laughs> Now we have no Peter and no Greta. Nobody. But I wouldn't give to have Peter back. <laughs> I know what you mean, darling. I miss him, too. I tell you, he's so much a part of this house. Wherever I look, I seem to see his face. I... <laughs> Peter! <laughs> Peter! Sorry to interrupt, but I want to say goodbye before I leave. Goodbye? Where are you going? Around the world. Got job on cramp steamer. What happened to you and the Bergens? I quit. Not happy working in old neighborhood with so many memories. Well, goodbye, Mr. Gray. Oh, now wait, Peter. Uh, can't we talk this thing over? Sorry, I have to run along. I'll be late for smallpox shot. <laughs> but uh, if you want to talk, we talk. Oh, good. Now look, these things happen all the time. You know, a man makes a stand on a principle and then Suddenly, he realizes he's wrong. Mr. Gregg, I accept your apology. <laughs> My apology? I was helping you with the oars. What I got to apologize for? All I do is buy a little record cleaner. Now look, Peter. I'm a reasonable man, and I'm willing to compromise. But $14.50 is too much to pay for any record cleaner. I won't go any higher than $5. Got to get smallpox shot. Now, wait a minute. Seven fifty. dollars uh, Where do you get passport photos? $11. Send you a nice card from Egypt. Okay, okay, $14.50. Go ahead, buy it. <laughs> Mr. Gregg, you drive hot bargain. I accept. <laughs> Welcome home.